Welcome to another video on decision tree hyperparameter tuning. In this video, we're going to tune the decision tree hyperparameters and ensure that it doesn't overfit. And the second thing that we'll be doing is creating a decision tree visualization and interpreting the result of that particular tree. For this particular example, we'll be using the heart disease UCI data. So let's get started with the code. I'm going to expand this. We'll begin by loading the libraries. We'll also take the path where the data set is present and then load the data set into the data data frame. Remember our target variable is this target one, whether that particular person has a heart disease or no. That's what we need to predict. And this is again a classification problem. So we're going to build a decision tree classification algorithm on this data. Then we'll divide our data into dependent and independent variables. We have y is equal to the target data and x is equal to the rest of the variable. So we got our y and x variables. Now we can divide our data into train and test by using the train test split method. We got the train test split data, the train and test data. Now let's look at the data so that we can analyze it with the decision tree visualization. So I basically ran this and exported the train data frame should be now available within this particular kernel. So I'll download this and keep it aside so that whenever we require it, we could be using it. So I'll just keep this aside for now. Then we'll start building the decision tree with the hyperparameter tuning. So for this example, we're going to use the randomized search CV. From the sklearn model selection, we'll import this particular method. We imported this method. Now the decision tree has hyperparameters such as max step, the criterion, either guinea or entropy, max step 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, max features, auto square root log 2, and min sample split 2, 4, 6. So we're going to take this set of hyperparameters for tuning our decision tree model. So once we have the hyperparameters set, now we have to build the decision tree grid. So we're going to take the randomized search CV. We're going to pass a decision tree classifier, then Parameter distributions is going to be equal to parameters that we have provided here. CV, we are going to take 5 and verbos is equal to true. So let's first run the parameters one. We got all the parameters. Now let's run the inst instance for randomized search CV. Now once that is declared, what we can do is now fit the model and see what our model is going to be looking like. Once we run the model, we have around 50 fits that the randomized CV went through. 10 for each of the five folds. I took around two seconds to run it and this is the one that we got. So now let's check what are the best estimators for this particular model. I want to look at the best estimators by saying dtgrid.best estimator. And if we look at it, we'll see that the criterion guinea, max step five, max feature square root, and the others that we gave were selected accordingly. Which means now, if we simply take this particular model, again, I'm just taking it for the example sake and build the model. We'll get a model that we have fitted with the best parameters, right? So I'm just taking that same model parameters and then fitting the model. And I'll get the brain model for decision tree. Let's check the accuracy on top of the model that we have built. Now remember in the previous case, the model accuracy was one, which is overfitting. But in this particular case, we, since we have done the hyperparameter tuning, it's not going to be overfitting anymore. So the train accuracy is 0.89, test accuracy is 0.85. We could have the gap even closer, but for this particular example, we'll just go ahead with this particular thing. And we'll have to do a lot of parameter tuning, add or delete these parameters that you have to get this proper trade-off of variance and bias. That is the train accuracy and the test accuracy. Now again, let's plot the tree and export the tree as PDF and interpret what's happening with that particular tree. So to plot the tree, we are going to use the export graph viz. So I'm going to take the dot data using export graph viz. We give the model and give a bunch of parameters that will help us export the graph viz. Next, we want to plot the graph at display. So I'm just going to run this and it's going to display the graph like so. Now there's a lot of things that we have here. It's not visible within the one page. So what we'll do is we'll export it within the PDF and then see how this visualization can be interpreted. 
So for this visualization, what I'm going to do now is take one more step and say graph.render hard digits to export it as PDF. And the rest of the steps that is there for visualization will remain the same. So if I do this, it will export this hard disease.pdf, which will be available in the working folder here. So I'm just going to download this hard disease.pdf so we can analyze this decision tree visualization. So now let's interpret the decision tree visualization. Let me open the PDF. I have zoomed into the first node that we have here and also the Excel file to support what we are looking at. But first, let's go and look at the parameters that we have used to be able to relate to what we are seeing in the PDF. We have the criterion used as guinea and you'll see that the guinea score is 0.49, which means among all the variables, the guinea score for CA less than 0.5 was the highest and hence it began as the first node here. And substitute nodes you'll see will be slightly lower than the value that we have here and it will keep decreasing and until you reach the last nodes that you have. Here. Also, we need to know what are the minimum samples that we can have. So here you can see the minimum sample split is six, which means to split a particular node here, you need to have minimum samples six. You will see that anywhere sample size is 79, 83, 18, only then it got split. If the sample size is less than six, it will not split it further. So that's what the minimum sample split does. Now, there's another thing that we have minimum samples leaf is equal to one here, which means that the end leaf that we have here can hold at least one sample. And depending on the algorithm, we can change that to either two, three, four or whatever. So that's how this some of the parameters that are here are available. And obviously, the max depth is five. And you can see that this tree has gone from this place that is level zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So we have like max depth of five within this decision. Now let's look at how this one got interpreted. So if you'll open the Excel file and look at CA less than 0 0.5, here I'm going to filter for CA less than 0 0.5. So if you look at the CA column, which is less than 0 0.5 and get the count of records that have CA less than 0 0.5, we'll create this particular node, which is the samples of 141 here. So let's look at the count here. I'm going to insert a column here and I'm going to say this is equal to count if give the range, comma, and give the formula as less than is equal to 0 0.5 and close the bracket. So you'll see that we'll we'll get 141 samples, which is satisfying this criteria. And then it comes to this particular node. Plus you'll see within this particular node, how many yeses and noes are there, right? So within the 141 that we have, you'll see that the noes or the yeses that we have will be a certain count. So if you just simply sum this, you'll see that you have 135 yeses, which is denoted by this 135 here. And if I were to just op do the opposite of it, which means if I do 242 minus this particular number, you will get that 107. So the records that satisfy CA less than 0 0.5 is going to be 141. So out of that 141, if you want to know how many of them have yes, it will be 130, 135. And the rest of them obviously will be no. So that's what the value representation is here, right? And the sum of these two values will be 242. That is the number of samples that we have. Now, if you move to this particular place, you'll see that this is a class no, which means the person does not have any uh, heart disease. That means the person does not have any heart disease. So the bluer it gets, the higher the chances that that particular person will not have the disease. And on the other hand side, the orange or browner it gets, that particular person has more chances of getting a heart disease. So if you have to follow this particular line down, you will see we'll be reaching to most cases, uh, some cases that are within the no criteria, right? So most of the cases that you have within this particular side will be leading to a no. 
except for a certain corner cases. But apart from that, if you see the right hand side where you have this 101 samples which are greater than 0.5 CA will have more chances of getting a heart disease and you'll see this particular branch will have many cases where you are able to get heart disease but a few corner cases where they will not be getting a heart disease and it is dependent on you know some of the variables that you're looking at. So this is how we typically analyze the decision tree. So we look at the variables and the samples that it creates and go down the tree to be able to get to an answer or the classification of yes or no. And each level will tell us what are the conditions that are met to be able to lead to that decision. And hence, decision tree becomes a very interpretable algorithm which we can use to not only classify properly, but also to interpret what variables are leading to that particular decisions. So that's how we do decision tree hyperparameter tuning with Python and export the decision tree and also interpret the decision tree outcomes. Thank you for watching this video guys. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.